should you work out while you're fasted? That's what we're going to be discussing in today's video, guys. And we're also going to be taking a look at my intermittent fasting before and after pictures. Now, my name's Steve and I've lost over a hundred pounds and gone from this to this. And intermittent fasting played a huge part in that journey. So let's answer the question, can you work out whilst you are fasted? I'm Steve, this is Life at the White House, let's get into it. Okay guys, now this transformation um, wasn't just thanks to one thing or another or just working out when I was fasting or keto diet or the forms of exercise that I was doing. This transformation is the result of a combination of things. So it's not just the one thing, but in these videos, we deep dive into each individual thing to try and help you out a little bit more in your weight loss journey. And talking of helping you out, guys, I've left a few things in the description that I've linked to that I think can help you out a little bit, whether that be Fitbits or earbuds or resistance bands, just something that I think can help you along your journey to hit your next goal. I've linked it all in the description and it's all available on Amazon, so it's easy for everyone. Okay, guys, I'm just going to briefly explain what intermittent fasting is for those of you that don't know. Okay, so with intermittent fasting, you will have an eating window and you will have a fasting window. Now, in your eating window, this is when you will consume all of your calories and your fasting window is when you will not consume any calories at all and you'll just be drinking water. Now, a common term in intermittent fasting is a 16 and 8. So we'll take a 16 and 8 as an example. Um, so say if your eating window starts at 12 midday, you'll have an eight hour eating window and that will bring you around to 8 p.m. and then you'll have a 16 hour fast. So that's a 16 and 8. Um, and 16 and 8 there's tw is 24, there's 24 hours in a day and it's just how you're breaking the day down. So you'll have an eight hour eating window and a 16 hour fast. And the same can be said for a 20 and 4 or OMAD, which stands for one meal a day, or 18 and 6. It's just how you're breaking the day down into your fasting and eating windows. Okay, so can you work out when you are fasted? Yes. Why? <laughs> because when you've gone to bed and you've had your last meal, let's say, let's look at that example that we used before, the 16 and 8, and you've finished your last meal of the day at 8 p.m. During the course of the night, you've probably burned through quite a lot of the carbs and sugars that you already had. So your energy source is primarily going to be coming from fats. So say you go to work out and you haven't eaten anything yet and you're in a fasted state, your body needs energy to perform that workout. So where is that energy going to come from? Okay, it's going to come from your stored fat um, and that's where the body's going to grab that energy from. Okay, now the first couple of times that I did this, I felt okay, but then once I got used to working out fasted and exercising fasted, I felt amazing as my body sort of made that switch to seeing fat as a form of energy. I felt incredible and my workouts felt a lot, lot better. And you know, if we're talking about stored fat as a form of energy, you know, I had a lot of energy to get through, right? <laughs> so, you know, I did feel really, really good once my body got used to that process and saw as, and sort of saw fat as a form of energy. It became a lot, lot better for me. Now, I just want to briefly touch on when I think you shouldn't be working out because once you get into it, working out can be addictive, I know, but there are some situations in which I wouldn't recommend working out, and we're going to touch on that now. Now, the first one is probably going to be a little bit obvious, but that's when you're a little bit sick or you have a bit of a cold. Um, just give your body that time to recover before you go and exercise again. You don't want to be in the gym with that or you just don't want to be exercising in general because um, the time you spend exercising or in the gym isn't going to be optimal if you like. You're, you're going to be lagging, your workout isn't going to be great and it's probably going to end up making you feel worse. So if you've got a cold or if you are feeling a bit sick, 
just stay at home, get better first, and then get back into the gym. Okay, number two is working out after a large meal. Now, if you work out straight after a large meal, it's gonna feel like it's just sitting on you. Um, and you're going to feel a lot heavier. Your workout's not going to be great. It's kind of the complete opposite of what we're talking about today. Working out fasted. Um, so that'll be number two. Just don't work out after a large meal. Give your body that chance to digest the meal. If you are going to eat before you work out. Just so you feel a little bit better in your workout. And you'll probably get a bit of a better result at the end of it. Okay guys and finally when you haven't fully recovered from an injury. Now I know I mentioned before that exercise and getting in the gym can maybe become a little bit addictive because you can see them results and then you just want to keep going but if you've suffered an injury or a setback it's important to let your body completely recover before you go and try and exercise or try and train again because what you're going to end up doing is picking up another knock you're going to be out for even longer and that's just going to rinse and repeat. So the next time you're going to pick up another, you're going to be out for even longer and then even longer again. So just give your body time to completely recover. And then when you do go back to train or you do go back in the gym, start slowly and build up to the level that you were previously before the injury. Okay, so don't go in there at 110 mile an hour thinking you can do what you were doing before your injury. Build up slowly to it. Okay cool okay guys thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it now my next video will be my income report video for the previous month and i know i did one previously and if you want to check that out to see how much youtube was actually paying me for these videos i'll link it at the end of the video or i'll link it just up above um but we're doing the next one in the next video so the following month and that <laughs> was a little bit more actually than my first ever month so um I can't wait to show you guys how much I've uh, I've made on YouTube. It's pretty crazy. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Steve. This has been Life at the White House. Beware the Donut Goblin, and I'll see you again next time. Cheers, guys. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you did like it, please do drop a thumbs up down below. If you want to see more videos, click on the link on the left-hand side. And if you've got any questions for me, leave them down there in the comments, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But apart from that, remember to subscribe and I'll see you again next time.